Welcome. In this video, we're going to walk through part two of project two in EDU 525. So on the left, I've already brought up the project two instructions and rubric, and I want to scroll down the page to the direction section to where I get to part two. When I get to part two, if you read the directions, basically you're going to identify multi-ethnic course materials to go along with the project two parameters that you completed in part one. So you basically in part one identified a lesson topic uh, that you're going to cover or present or work with and now you're going to go find some multi-ethnic content related to specifically to Columbia to add into your lesson. So yes this is not something that you would do in a normal everyday lesson uh, but the, the goal is for you to recognize the cultural differences of the students you teach on a yearly basis, on a semester by semester basis, and integrate different pieces of culture from each of those individual students into your lessons so that you're making everyone feel welcome and creating a sense of community within your class. And so one of the examples, if we look in the center of the directions, it says, for example, for example, if the lesson is for a math class, you may develop a word problem that reflects a personal situation in Columbia. And then it also goes on to talk about in a history class, you may look at an article specifically about specific cities or areas within Columbia and compare those to local areas where you teach and where you live or where your students are, are from. So with this, I want to talk about what kind of detail we're looking for here. We want detail that shows that you've actually taken the time and effort to research specific concepts or items, locations, everything within Columbia and the Colombian culture. So just simply say that I'm going to have students complete problems where they are, you know, working with money and maybe they're buying goods that would typically be bought in uh, Colombia that are popular in Colombia. You want to talk about the two different types of currency, the currency used in the United States, the currency used in Colombia. What is the difference in value between the two? And you could use, for example, you could have some problems where you're integrating different aspects, whether it be food, whether it be geography, whatever it may be, and you are having students convert from one currency to the other um, and do different things like that and specifically show you know the value of each currency and that type of thing you don't have to do a full huge elaborate lesson plan but we do want to know and see that you've taken some time to research so on the right I've got a really really good example of the type of level of detail that we're looking for when we're talking about the course material. So on the right to highlight a few things, um, there is an introduction at the beginning that basically says in this lesson students, students will study both Goldilocks and the Three Bears as well as Rubia and the Three Osos. And so what the second story is, is basically Goldilocks and the Three Bears as it's told in the Colombian culture. If you're an English teacher, you have all kinds of options because children's literature, whether it be fables or fairy tales, different things like that, they have different versions around the world. So you can integrate both those and compare and contrast. And so the, the overall lesson that's being talked about is about components play, de determine how cultural components play a role in changing the details of the story but not the overall message and so they're going to look at plot and different things. If I scroll down through the course materials you'll notice that there are a number of citations throughout. Uh, it talks specifically about you know research shows that pertinent cultural examples have a positive impact on academic accomplishments of students who are ethnically diverse. Great citation from Gay in 2002. Uh, one example of a way multi-ethnic course material could be included in this third grade language arts lesson is by studying the passages of both Goldilocks and the Three Bears and Rubia and the Three Osos and so working back and forth between those and I'm not going to go through and read all that but there is some information that talks about um, 
there's some other examples of the story. So you can, if you're an English teacher, you can look at fairy tales. If you're a math teacher, you can look at convert and currency. Another thing that you can look at are recipes, recipes from your local state or local district, wherever it may be that you're working in, and compare those to common popular dishes or dinners in um, Colombia. What, what are the different types of ingredients? So there's different things you can do with course materials to integrate those. And then once you get the course materials put together, the next part is to focus on different methods for instruction. So it says, detail your plan to tailor instruction to be culturally responsive for all of the students in the class, including. And so there are two main specific sub items you have to have to go along with the second part of part two. The first is you want to show two choices you will provide to students during the lesson, such as to demonstrate their mastery of content or to contribute to the content. Uh, you can do this in a number of different ways. If I go down to student choice in the example, uh, it said this lesson can be further extended and allow for opportunity for any student to provide answer choices that reveal their culturally experience, cultural experiences by asking students to create their own version of the story. And so that is a great example. They compared the two. And they looked at, you know, how did the story change from one culture to the next, from one language to the next? And so how can I put my own spin on that story? And so that is an option that's a good option in terms of student choice. Um, so with that, you have two sub bullet points. The two choices you define should be opportunities for students of any culture to provide content examples and answers that can reflect both their learning and cultural experiences. So if we go back to that example, more specifically, the teacher goes on to say, this would be accomplished by having students fill in a template where they would select a character such as Querlo, an islander, or someone who lives in the inner city, or a child from Asia or Africa or a Native American or a mermaid or whomever. So this leaves it open enough so that anyone from any different cultural background can come up with different things that suit them specifically and add to the overall conversation and lesson. It also says explain, include an explanation of how and why providing students with choices uh, to what you've learned about culturally responsive teaching practices and student engagement in online courses. The second one, the second sub bullet point is where you have to have citations and that explanation of how and why the providing, that has to include citations of what you've found in the resources that have already been provided in Unit 2 and the resources that we've been sharing with you through announcements and other course uh, specific items. Next, you want to talk about two specific examples of how you will frame lesson content in the context of cultures and culturally responsive or cultural experiences other than the dominant culture of the United States. So what are you going to look at? What are you going to do? And so in this example, a framework that educators should not forget to take account of when forming a lesson are all of the dominants that lie outside of the academic realm, such as social, emotional, and cultural considerations. So there's a number of different things that you can take into account when you are talking about the specific non-dominant U.S. cultures. So this is a separate section than what you did up above. So you did two course materials up above and the same two can be used to help with the explanation for the second sub point below but you have to go into more detail. You know uh, with that you're going to talk about how you're going to focus on we're kind of flipping the script here. So uh, chances are you may have a few different cultures represented in your online course, but most of the time U.S. dominant culture is going to be the, the biggest, take up the most um, of your enrollments. But we want to kind of put those students in a situation where they're experiencing different, experiencing different aspects of the Colombian culture. So you want to make sure that you frame that in a way with citations where you're basically kind of going into the culture of Colombia. So you want to pick something 
that you can integrate into with your lesson objectives and plan integrate in with the cultural cultural aspects of Columbia. So basically again there's citations found throughout the example that I'm showing on the right a variety of different citations now gay is cited quite often but there are other citations throughout uh, you've got Cedar you've got Woodley et al. 2017 you have a variety Whitaker and so forth Hatchfield there are a variety of so it shouldn't be just one citation throughout this entire part two you should have a variety of citations explanations that relate back to research those citations should also link directly to references uh, and so I can see the Cedar Gay 20, uh, 2002, 2000, 2013 and so forth Hatchfield all those should match up to in-text citations that are included in your project. So this concludes uh, the walkthrough of what's expected with part two for project two in EDU 525.